श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम देर इज समथिंग कॉल टेक्निकली एज तात्पर्य निर्णय इन सिंपल लैंग्वेज इट मीन्स द मॉरल ऑफ द स्टोरी About this, I'll tell you one story. Then we'll see the moral. There was this story I had told earlier, and I am thankful that you all forgotten. <clears throat> There was a fish from the sea. He happened to go to a well, and he entered the well, and in that well there was a frog. The frog was Indian. speciality of the indians are many specialities they want to collect information about everything for no reason so this frog started where are you from what is your name so the fish told i am fish i am from ocean but the frog has never gone out of the well what is ocean ocean is collection of waters how much so the fish said a lot lot means how much then the frog started showing his understanding about a lot so he said this much water now you see the tragedy of the fish he doesn't have a neck so he can't say like that so he wagged his tail no then the frog took his two hands this much water again the fish said no then he took a leap within the waters from here to there no baba then the frog got frustrated angry sarcastic and he jumped diagonally from wall to wall do you mean this much water what the fish can say he said no then come i'll show you and both of them go to the sea after they reach the sea now the fish asked the question to the frog tell me how much is the water the frog keeps quiet this is the story this story i told in one of my satsang somewhere and there was one very old man sitting right in the front very simple tan type listening and in between when i was telling something he used to say hm hm so what can you do to that old man after the story was over he raised his hand maharaj i got a question and normally i don't entertain but looking at his age i have no guts to say nothing to him so yes sir how did the fish from the sea go to the well and met the frog after he asked this question he was looking at others let us see what it is so i told him yes you have got a very good question the fish went to the well by king fisher airlines <laughs> now what was the story the story is a person who is not able to draw 
the right conclusion from anything that is stated, he is lost only in the non-essentials in life. The story conveys, if you are lost only in small little thing, this is called technically Kupa Manduka Vritti. Me, my wife, my children, go, 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 get out of it. All life goes only in that. See, friends. And then we want to know God. So he is laughing at her. Unless we break this barrier of small little thinking, we cannot merge in the infinite. It is for this purpose. Our scriptures have got many topics. One topic is creation. Second topic is uh, what is the spiritual practice? Third topic is what is God? Fourth topic is, what is the soul, jiva? Fifth topic is, where can be God, see, where the God can be seen? Fifth topic is, what is the ultimate truth? And ultimately, how do we recognize that we have really realized the truth? How do we know that? These are the topics. Now, all these topics are <clears throat> indicated to us by a simple rule. The unknown is indicated with reference to the known. Uh, who is uh, Arvind Bhai? You don't know? Guru Bha's brother. Oh, because I know Guru Bha. See? So, what do we know in this our life, we know this world. Then, world is explained. World is not explained, told. The theory of creation, there are dozens of theory of creation. It is not meant for <clears throat> proving or disproving that there is a creation. No. That is not the purpose. Purpose is, from this inquiry, you come to know yourself. This is the purpose. And therefore, friends, the essence of the complete knowledge in the world is Veda. For Vedas, you know. Essence of all the Vedas are Upanishads. Vedanta, what we call. Essence of all the Upanishads is Bhagavad Gita. You all are well read. At the end of every chapter, there is a statement. Om Tassaditi Srimad Bhagavad Gita Su Upanishad Su Brahma Vidyayam Yoga Shastri Sri Krishna Arjuna Samvade Purushottama Yoga Nama Panchadashodhyaya So Upanishad Su. So essence of the Veda is Upanishad. Essence of the Upanishads is Bhagavad Gita. Essence of Bhagavad Gita is the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Concentrated. See. And it is not very long. Only 20 verses. And if we really study and digest this 15th chapter, we have studied everything. There is nothing more that is required to be studied thereafter. Therefore, we will be studying this 15th chapter exhaustively, deeply. Exhaustively, deeply doesn't mean seriously, lightly. Don't become serious. See, once I was talking somewhere, it was a... Um, special program and four or five Mahatmas were sitting and I was also invited. So all of them were very big, big. They have got their own, but if, uh, what they call, you know, asan wala. So when the Mahatma sit, they put the asan and then the Mahatma sit there.
they just can't go and sit anywhere somebody has to be there so like there all big big mahatma i was there all alone ekameva dvitiya neha nanasti kinchana neha mamasti kinchana in a chacha so i went and uh, was sitting he said uh, uh, maharaj you come and sit here you have to give a talk i said okay i came he said who is your sevak sevak means servant who is your sevak i said who are you maharaj he said do it what then after that my talk was over then one old mahatma that time i was young huh? so that old mahatma he told me beta i will tell you something don't mind i said no i have no mind to tell you should not talk bhagavad gita so lightly bhagavad gita we should study seriously i said okay then after that was over one youngster he was watching that he asked me you tell me why you take li- talk lightly and not seriously and you told him that yes i will talk seriously what is the truth as the truth is given in bhagavad gita when arjuna was constantly crying in the first chapter that time bhagwan krishna did not do jugalbandi with him he did not cry sanjay tells to dhritarashtra that time bhagwan krishna prasanniva bharata with a smile on the face and love in the heart he spoke when original bhagavad gita is delivered in a cheerful mode why we should become very serious spirituality is not a punishment i was punished once i have no memory i don't remember anything so there was something to be remembered this 15 chapter to be remembered and i could not remember so i was punished so what is the punishment punishment was i was asked to write 15 chapter in sanskrit for 21 times i was so much frustrated but there was no choice see so if somebody is to be punished by a teacher who is a yoga teacher and he has to punish the student what will be the punishment see do shirshasan for one hour punishment so bhagavad gita study is not a punishment it's a joy and therefore we will be studying this bhagavad gita very simple way and not getting into the complications but try to find out the moral of the story what is the moral of the story and thus in next few days few of two days na no? so six seven talks whatever are given to me by my boss will try to find it out see before we come to the 15th chapter we must know what happened earlier suddenly the 15th chapter doesn't begin there are many ways of looking at it now one another way see we now are talking in um, which temple sarveshwar temple last two days okay you know where i was talking so there we have seen that first chapter of bhagavad gita tells condition of yours and mine and that condition is called as arjun vishada yoga now this first principle we have to learn if your dream is going very well beautiful dream you are somewhere in switzerland and going by a nice car and you have got all your beloved girlfriends with you and nicely music you know and that dream will never break but in that dream your car skids and goes into the deep valley your dream breaks exactly the same way when everything is happening goody 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 
his dream will not break. Then something happens which we never expected in our life. Then we want to know why me, why me? The answer is why not, why not? Friends, we have to wake up from this waking dream. It is for this purpose we are here. See, in Panchadashi, this topic comes very simple topic. There are various stages where I appears. Real I is called a Mukhyatma, the primary self. The second one is the one who goes through the experiences of the dream. The dream self is called as Pratimasik one, dreamer. The third one is the waker as you and me. This is the Vyamaharik. We have to conduct the business of our life. And the fourth one is the Gauna, the secondary. The secondary one is the mother, father, mother, sister, husband, wife, in-laws, outlaws. Now out of this, where do we fit ourselves? Now analyze. When some good or bad dream happens and we are out of the dream, that time what is our attitude towards the dream? Come on, you know, just a dream, forget about it. We don't give much importance unless we are crazy. Then we go to the second step. If we are, as you are all, including myself, as we are walking the spiritual path, this is called as the Paramarthik Satya, the seeker. One was the dreamer, second was the waker. Waker is not influenced by what is happening in the dream. Now the waker and the seeker. What should be the attitude of the seeker for the waker? See, two of them. The waker is having problems. Mother, father, mother, husband, wife, children. The seeker he is out of it. See, therefore, this birth of ours as a seeker he never dies. I as a body dies. I as a mother, father, brother, husband dies. But I as a seeker never dies. Now this seeker, what will be or what should be his attitude toward the waker? See? The seeker should be very clear. All the experiences of our life, they are designed for us to focus our attention to the goal, the purpose of our life. There is only one purpose pending in our life. As the plants we ate from below grew upward. As animals we ate from the front grew backwards. As human beings, we are eating above and growing downwards. We have reached the acme of evolution at the level of the body. What will be the next evolution? Next evolution can be only spiritual evolution which is pending. And what is spiritual evolution? We empty ourselves to such an extent that he possesses us and he expresses through us. See friends, and when can he express through us if we are empty? How we are filled? We are filled by our own programs. For example, this mic. Mike has nothing to talk, nowhere to go, nothing to do, no program. And 
a fit one. Then only this mic is between you and me. In the same manner, between the Lord and His creation. If we have to be in between, we have to be empty, no personal agenda, and we should be fit. Then only He will select us. Don't run after Him. Let Him run after us. He is searching. Let me find out at least a person through whom I can complete my job. Are we not doing this thing in our life? If we want to do something, like I had some problem in my back. So, I did not go to any other person, to a person who is fit, who is available, who is willing, who is sincere, who is capable, who has no personal agenda. Don't we go to the right person? He also is searching for a right person. The right person is the one who is completely empty, Nothing to do, nowhere to go. Then he decides, you go there, you go there and relax. See my friends, therefore, the purpose of studies is only we complete our spiritual evolution in this very life. All the problems are inside. There is no problem outside. And the problems are because of wrong thinking, because of wrong notions. Wrong notions can be removed by right understanding. You take any other path, path of dharma. So what is the path of dharma? You see, I respect everybody, I do this thing, I do that thing, I go to the temple. Path of Dharma. So what we say, earlier I was never going to the temple, but now I started going to the temple. Earlier I was eating non-veg every day, now I eat alternatives. The I still maintained. See, yogi, earlier I was a bhogi, but now I am a yogi. Earlier I could not uh, stand even on two legs quite. But now I can do even Shirshasan. I still maintained, friends, it is not replacement of the notions. Removing the notions without creating new notions. We are all leading a notional life. A notion is what? I am holier than thou. Friends, and therefore, the real spiritual practice is our understanding about ourselves, about the world, about spiritual practice, about God, about uh, sadhana should be distinctly clear. And therefore, we friends, is the most important thing. We cannot become divine. Man can become husband. Husband cannot become man. Why? He is already a man. He became husband. He already is a man. In the same manner, we don't have to become divine friends. Let the divinity express through us. So what will be the realization for a husband? Realization for a husband will be he is happy in spite of his wife. He is realized. He doesn't have to go anywhere. He doesn't have to do the japa standing on one leg. Om Namasya, Om Namasya, Om Namasya. No, 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 no. Relax, be happy, that's it. How simple spiritual life is. 
But we are given so many complicated things, you know. Do this asan, do that asan, do this japa, do that japa. See, there are four stages. Uttama sahaja vastha. Madhyama dhyana dharana. Adhama murti puja cha. And tirtha yatra adhama dhama. Means, Sahajavastha Uttama. Relax. You are at peace with yourself. Nothing to do. Nowhere to go. Living at zero desire level. Jo thari rai so mari rai. It's a Marwadi mantra. Thari rai means, Oh Lord, your will, thy will be done, thy will be done, not mine, not mine, not mine. I'll give you one simple mantra, try. Never be a leader in life if you want to walk spiritual path. Be a follower. Okay? Intelligent husbands, listen to the wife. Okay? This mantra also I told you, simplest mantra. When she is talking, you should keep quiet. When she is quiet, you should not talk. You will reach the divine. Okay. Life becomes very easy. It's not difficult. Therefore, we have to clearly understand we don't have to become divine. Then the divinity is hidden by Wrong notions. See, Bhagavan also in Bhagavad Gita, nowhere he tells Arjuna the knowledge. And none of the things which are told in Bhagavad Gita were ever practiced by Arjuna on the battlefield. Then what happened? Arjuna himself says, Tarpanya dosho pahata svabhavaha pruchami tvam dharma sammudha cheta. Oh Lord, because of self-pity, friends, as we should not have pity on others, we should not have self-pity. Papo ham, papa karma ham, oh God, I am son, parjane. No, 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 you are divine. Whether you want or you don't want, you are. Whether you know or you don't know, you are. See? But why, what happens? Karpanya dosha, having self-pity. That is the highest insult to the divine. We should not feel pity on others. If you have to, you love, serve. If you can't love, you can't serve, never mind. But don't have pity. Or, or, poor fellow, he doesn't have anything. In anyway, uh, go away. No, you are destroying your mind. See, friends. Therefore, these wrong notions are covering our divinity. And the first wrong notion is self-pity. Karpanya dosha. And therefore, dharma sammudha cheta. Therefore, I am confused about what is my position in life. See? We all have to have this awareness 24-7. At this moment, our one of the maha mantra is, wherever you are, whenever you are, whatever you are, be hundred percent. Simple thing. This is the uh, summary of the whole Bhagavad Gita. If you want to know what Bhagavad Gita told, don't have to take a fat, huge book of Bhagavad Gita. They create dar lagda bhav. No, one sentence. Where was Arjun? On the battlefield. When? At the time of the war. What he should be? A warrior. But what happened? He became a grandson. He became a disciple. He became a brother. Confusion came. Identity crisis. Same thing happens. We are here in the satsanga. During the satsanga, we should be what? Satsangi. 
But instead of revealing as a satsangi, we become somebody or the other. Suppose the example is that husband and wife, and if I condemn the husband and praise the wife, immediately the wife looks and says, I am not talking to you. Wife is a common noun. It's not a proper noun. See? But that wife has gone so deep in their system, they don't get out of it. See? The more we become aware of this, and this wrong notion of Arjuna made him paralyzed. And after the whole Bhagavad Gita was over, Bhagavan Krishna did not ask Arjuna, Arjun, you heard Bhagavad Gita from me. Did you get the right knowledge? No, this was not the question. Question was, has your delusion gone or not? Kachid eta sutam partha toya eka greena chetasa kachid ajnana sammoha delusion pranashtaste dharanjaya. Has it gone or not? Arjuna also replies the same way. He doesn't say, I got the Gita knowledge. No. Nashto moha smriti labdha Tat prasad atmaya chuta. Titosmi gata sandeya. Now I am free from all doubts. What is the doubt? About who am I? Where I am? When I am? What I am? We all know what I am. We do not know who I am. What I am? I am mother, father, brother, sister, husband, wife. Who I am? See, my friends, therefore, the real study is to get rid of the wrong notions. The truth will be revealed. And it is for this purpose, the first chapter is brought out. The wrong notions is the main culprit in our life. Even today, one day one youngster asked me this question. Uh, you don't mind, <coughs> we are in the modern digital world. Morning news becomes stale by afternoon. Bhagavad Gita is 5000 years old and how it can be applicable today? I said, hey, you are very intelligent today. I have not studied computer science, but little bit what I know is, during the time of Mahabharat war, when Arjuna, etc. were there, were they seeing by the nose? No, they are seeing by the eyes. Okay, very good. That time they were walking by the legs or they were walking by a shirshasan? No, they were walking by legs. Very good. They were taking food by the mouth or by the ears? No, by the mouth. So what is the difference that time and now? That time also the same thing. Anger, greed, frustration, everything. Today also the same thing. Human mind is the same. And Bhagavad Gita is not addressed to animals. Bhagavad Gita is not addressed to a people in a geographic area during a particular time period. It is a universal, like physics chemistry, universal. I cannot say, I don't believe in Britishers, you know. They have ruled our country, ruined, so I don't believe. Then, this law of gravity, Newton, I don't believe in that. I go on the 10th floor, I don't believe, and jump. You may not believe. See, friends, whether we want or we don't want, the truth alone is revealed in the Bhagavad Gita. See, nowhere it is mentioned that this is meant for a particular, like the Hindus or Sanatani or a Gujarati or a Bengali, nowhere. It is meant for human beings. See, friends. Therefore, these are the two things. One is, self-pity should not be entertained. Never feel low in your spirit. And second thing, never have this confusion about what I should do or whether this is... No, no, no. Be clear. These two things, first chapter is complete. Then in the second chapter, Bhagavan told two things again. First, he gave a, a very simple approach. 
spiritual life is nothing but common sense which is most uncommon see what is the common sense see there is one text where this topic is brought out very beautifully very deep text it is see death is an impossibility so when we say but you know our scriptural day when somebody dies he go to hell and heaven all that okay whatever you accept yourself that you are you accept yourself i am unfortunate yes you are unfortunate you think yourself to be i am very uh, fortunate yes you are fortunate nobody requires to be told we ourselves decide in the same manner i decide i am a man i am a body i am a human being nothing wrong but then accept everything associated with the body dehi no spin yatha dehe kaumaram yovanam jara tatha dehantara prapti dheeras tatra namuyati if you accept yourself to be body nothing wrong then accept you are born you grow you will become old you will have diseases one day you will die but i don't want to die suffer see if you don't want to die then drop that idea that you are a body then take another one what i am a soul make a soul career and enjoy the when you are a soul means what you will not die the body will die then you will go from one body to another body maja aayega isn't it you take a flight get into that your destination come you discard the flight you are going again to new place then one day it will click come on really did i did the soul die did i ever die see before coming to um here in um, south africa i was in uh, mumbai before that i was in um, kuala lumpur before that i was in uh, auckland before that brisbane melbourne sydney so when i left sydney sydney dead for me i am still there melbourne i left melbourne dead for me i am still there brisbane i left brisbane dead for me i am still there Auckland, I left. Auckland dead. I am still there. Everything died, and the same. Is it not? Childhood died. Have we changed? Teenage died. Middle age died. On the contrary, in old age, we should be expert in dying. for the first time if you die then it is difficult to understand but now you are expert man see friends when you understand the things in the right spirit then slowly you will start growing spiritually and what is the spiritual growth you are at peace with yourself we have nothing to prove to anybody in life let's be real spiritual evolution is not becoming extraordinary remain ordinary drop all extra how much extra we are carrying i am rich i am poor i am man i am woman i am intelligent i am dumb we so many drop all that but instead of dropping all that we add one more burden i am spiritual also spirituality is a process of undoing spiritual life is a process of unbecoming we don't become spiritual if you become spiritual you will be fake let the divinity express through us and the divinity is not special take your own experience for the vision all colors and forms are same red color blue color green color yellow color 
it doesn't influence the vision. Then what is vision? Vision has no color. Vision has no form. So, without the vision, can the colors and form be established? No. See? So, what is the reality? Reality is non-specific, non-spatial color. It is not said red, blue, green, yellow. Form. It is not said tall, short, round, square. Shabda, sound, it is not said God's name or abuse. Smell, it is not said good smell, bad smell. The more we are able to drop the specialities associated with our experiences, we reach the destination that we are. And therefore, in the second chapter, Bhagavan gives us this common sense. See? Anybody who is born has to die. Who has not died? Difficulties come in everybody's life. What can be done? You have to tolerate it. What cannot be cured should be uh, endured. That is the way. And everybody has the same kind of problem. There is nothing new that has happened. Slowly, slowly, Bhagavan cools down Arjuna's and then when he sees... Now Arjun is available a little bit and then he tells what is the truth. And in that he said, Sitva Syam Antakalepi Brahma Nirvana Murchati. When you thus abide in the truth, your life is fulfilled. So these two chapters, first and second chapter, in short, complete Bhagavad Gita. Then from the third chapter, up to 12th chapter. How do we implement this knowledge in our day-to-day -day life? Then we are told in the 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, up to 12th chapter, this is called the Upasana Kanda or how this can be applied in our life. The first Karma Yoga, then Jnana Karma Sanyasa Yoga, Slowly, slowly, and then uh, um, this uh, uh, Atma Sayyama Yoga, Jnana Vidyana Yoga, slowly, slowly, the mind is funneled into uh, dropping all the extra things, come to a simple point. And then we come in the 13th chapter. And in the 13th chapter, then we are told the most important thing. There is but one reality expressing in and through everything. About this, I'll tell you an example. This I have quoted in some of my talks. This happened in Delhi many years before. <clears throat> there was, there is one police officer. Very rare police officer. If I tell you something, you will not believe me. But it is true. He is known to me for last about 8-10 years. In these 10 years, I know nothing about him. He never told, except his name, because it is written on his shirt. Other than that, nothing is known. Where from he is, whether he is married or not, children or not, nothing. He never spoke anything except the inquiry about the truth. No other topic. And <clears throat> once he came and he said, Swamiji, I am very busy these days. I am unable to come and attend satsang. So you please give me some homework so that I can work on that principle for my whole life till I am able to come for your satsang. I said, okay. Start his yes. Like that, it was evening. I was in my room. I said, switch off the light. He switched off the light. Door closed, yes. Now you answer my questions. Don't just say dumb way. Intelligently you have to tell me. What do you see? He said darkness. I said you are dumb. No Swamiji, darkness. Eyes cannot see darkness. Eyes can see only the light. 
Yes. Never mind. Switch on the light. Switch on. Now what do you see? Oh, I see you, I see your laptop, I see your shoes, the water bottle, the AC and the fan and everything. I said, keep on going, really, I don't mind. That's all. I said, something more? No. I said, I can see something more. What is that? I am seeing the light also. Oh, yes, Swami. Something more? I said, see, think again. What more you are seeing? I can see. Still more. No, no, there is all. I said, no, I can see electricity. Swamiji, I agree I am defeated. I said, no. You are defeated if you don't learn. Friends, if you learn from your failure, you are a successful person in life. He said, no, Swamiji, now tell me what I have to learn. He said, look here. <clears throat> when lights were on, you were so much lost in the contents of the room that you have forgotten the light because of which the contents were seen. Similarly, you were so much lost in the light and the contents that you have forgotten the electricity because of which everything was possible. We are lost in the stones and the bricks of this world. We are lost in our faculties, slavery to the faculties. Okay? We are lost in the emotional upsurge. We are lost in I, I, I. But all of them are possible because of that which is beyond all this. See my friends, this is what Bhagwan said in the 13th chapter to Arjuna. He spoke in English. Chetradnyam chapi maam vidhi sarva kshetri shubharata. Hey Arjun, he was at this a Bharata. Bharata means bha means knowledge. Rata means reveling. He who is reveling in knowledge is Bharata. So, Arjun, I am alone expressing in and through everything and being. But like this example, we are lost in the contents. We are lost the light because of which the contents are seen. We are lost because of the utility, value, relations, friends, achievement, failure. And all these things are possible because of what? That we are totally indifferent to. Thus, in the 13th chapter onwards, Bhagwan begins this initiation into the 15th chapter. Then, in the 14th chapter, Bhagwan tells this clear picture about how we are overpowered by. Three factors in life. The three factors are uh, matter, worldly things, activity, actions, and knowledge. If we have to define the world, what is the world? World has got only these three parameters. No third, fourth thing. Either things or activity or knowledge. Then, what is the cause of this tree? So we are told that the cause of matter is Tamoguna, the cause of activity is Rajoguna, the cause of knowledge is Sattvaguna. So these are the three 
gunas of the prakriti and we are under the influence of this prakriti so either we are lost in the matter collecting the things or we are lost in the activities i want to do this i want to do that or we are lost in the knowledge read so much that there is a hodgepodge in the head see there was a girl i remember her she asked me one day swami ji yes mm you are not talking to me i said no not like that then i said i am afraid of you why are you afraid you know so much that if i open my mouth on any topic you will start talking so much on that topic and i feel myself so useless yaar i don't know see knowledge 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 what will you do that see and therefore bhagwan says function through tamo guna rajo guna sattva guna see prakasham cha pravrutim cha moham eva cha pandava na dveshti sam pravrutani na nivruttani kaankshati as per the need function through but don't get entangled into that spiritual life is not going to the himalayas and creating a hotel there no need wherever you are whenever you are be happy that's it don't expect the things to change and then i will be happy it will never happen see friends after this was told then we enter the 15th chapter now the 15th chapter begins with different topics first topic is about the world second topic is what should be the spiritual practice with reference to the world then what will be the general spiritual practice to realize the truth then next topic comes who is the jiva who is doing this spiritual practice then comes where the god can be seen in this manner slowly slowly the teacher brings every topic back to our own self and thus like tulsi das ji says in ram charit manas kami hi nari pyari jimi lobi hi priya jimi dam timi raghunath nirantara priya lagahu mohiram like for a greedy person everywhere money is the only criteria no other criteria money 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 in the same manner oh lord let me have love for you for me let there be no other theme in my life except ram 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 nirgunat nirantar priha lagahu mohi ram that commitment is required and for that here are various topics taken by bhagwan sri krishna for all of us now we will read the Uh, first verse if you want you can repeat after me if you don't want who cares huh? they will chat huh. okay you follow me don't follow him shri bhagavan uvacha ऊर्धमूलमदाखम भगवान खाना नहीं खाए क्या से लाउडली एवरीबडी श्री भगवान उच अब देखो आ गया ना आवाज ऊर्धमूलमदाखम अश्वत्थम प्राहुरव्यय छंदी ये यस्तम वेद स वेद श्री भगवान उवाच 
if you see the normal translations, there it is mentioned, Bhagavan Sri Krishna said, that is wrong translation. He fails. You know, many people study Bhagavad Gita, but the purpose is totally different. Once it happened in US, I was invited somewhere for lunch. I went there and there was a group of about 15, 20 people. And Swamiji, um, would you like to hear something from you on Gita? I said, look here, I come for food. I'll take only food, no talking. Then there was an old man there. And they introduced me. Swamiji, he is so and so. He came from India and he was teaching us Gita for last six months. So immediately, uh, may I ask you to speak on the second chapter of Gita? Now he was a guest imported from India. So please tell something. So second chapter, one hour over. Then question answer. I say I have no questions, no answer. No, at least one question you should answer. No old man, what can you argue with them? With old people, you should never argue. Simply say yes and forget about it. They are gone cases. So, he asked me, how many verses are attributed to Sanjay, Dhritarashtra, Arjun and Bhagavan Sri Krishna? So, I got a Mahamantra, IDK. You know IDK? You are dumb. I don't know. <laughs> this is the latest words. So I say, IDK. He said, no, 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 you have to tell. I said, okay, listen. One verse to uh, Dhritarashtra and zero verses to Bhagwan Sri Krishna. Bhagwan Sri Krishna did not speak one single verse in Bhagavad Gita. When I said like this, he nearly jumped. What? I said, yes. How can you say that? I said, show me your book. Where it is said, Bhagavan Sri Krishna Uvacha, show me. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Shivji is Bhagavan. Ram is Bhagavan. Brahmaji is Bhagavan. Narayan is Bhagavan. Is it mentioned anywhere? Sri Krishna Uvacha. That means, I said, topic is over. No further discussion. Friends, Bhagavad Gita is not to be studied as an academic achievement. The difference between studying Bhagavad Gita and other subject is this. When you look at the object, you look at the object. But when you look at the mirror, you don't look at the mirror, you look in the mirror. And in the mirror also, you don't look at the reflection, you look at yourself. Exactly the same way, when we study Gita, we don't study Gita, we don't see there anything, we see everything in ourselves. If that is not happening, we will write one more thesis on uh, Bhagavad Gita. You will get a degree, you will get one increment also. That has nothing to do with our spiritual practice. Therefore, <clears throat> Sri Bhagavan Vacha means what? Bhagavan Vacha therefore means, be very attentive, the declaration by the divine is not conditioned by time, space, object or a situation. It is eternal. This is the meaning of Sri Bhagavan Vacha. Therefore, you know, when we translate Bhagavad Gita with the grammatical knowledge of Sanskrit, we may cheat others, but we are cheating ourselves the most. Sri Bhagavan Vacha, these are the eternal declaration by the Divine. It cannot be corrupted, cannot be improved upon. There is no... Um, what do you call that? A improved edition. No, no improved edition. New Testament. It is not a New Testament, Old Testament. No. It is the same one as delivered by the Lord available to us. No changes. 
we have to change. So Sri Bhagavan Vacha, therefore, these are the eternal words, cannot be corrupted by time, space and object. So what Bhagavan said, Urdva Mula Madashakam Ashwatham. Ashwatham is the banyan tree. And you know one beautiful thing about a banyan tree? Banyan tree, if you take the fruits, dry them, take out the seeds and sow them, they will never germinate. Peculiarity. But when the fruits of the same banyan tree are eaten by the birds, then they are processed through the gastrointestinal tract of the bird and it is thrown from his fecal material and wherever it lands, then the tree starts growing. Therefore, you must have seen this banyan tree or these um, fig trees, they are growing in such a place where nobody can go and sow them. See, once I have seen somewhere, probably in here in South Africa or Kenya or somewhere, very peculiar. There was one electric post or some kind of abandoned post. On the top of that post, there was one tree growing. So my friend said, Swami, you see, how can it happen? I said, somebody must have gone and sown there. No, it cannot. This is how it happens. When the birds eat that fruit, the seeds are processed and therefore samsara is not created only by the man or only by the woman. See? How simple it is. Two to come together, create confusion. Urdhva Mula Madha Shakam Ashwatham. Now, second meaning of Ashwatham is A means not. Shoka Ashoka. So, Anta Ananta. So, A means not. Shua means tomorrow. That which is not the same as it is today, tomorrow it is not the same. Meaning, that which is constantly changing is Ashwatha. So, two meanings. And this is Avyayam. This is all the time the same rule is applicable. It has not changed at all. Prahuravyam and Chandamsi Yasya Paradani. So this world is what? See, when I was coming, I saw some of the trees. They were very green, lush green leaves. Some of them were only barren, no leaf. The beauty of any tree is never because of the fruits or the flowers, but the beauty is because of the leaves. Chandamsi means leaves. Leaves means the scriptural pages. This samsara vruksha, this a tree of the samsara is beautified by the leaves of the scriptures. Meaning, when we lead our life according to the scriptural injunctions, then only this samsara vruksha looks beautiful. Chandamsi yasya pradani. Yahatam vedasa vedavit. He who knows this truth, he alone has known everything. Now one more word remaining. The first word, Urdhva Mulam Adashakam. It is such a tree which has the roots above and the branches below. Now be attentive, be subjective. I am not telling you objective things. One child asked me somewhere some I was, must be five, six years girl, very sweet one. Uh, Swamiji, yes, when the world is created and where from the world begins and where the world ends, she was talking to me, but her eyes were somewhere else. I knew somebody must have told her to ask this question. So I asked her, 
hey, who asked you to ask me this question? Mommy, poor child. Then I called her mommy. I said, mommy, why don't you ask Swamiji? I am afraid of you. She said, I am not a non-vegetarian. I don't eat people. Then I said, listen. Now answer my question. When did you wake up in this morning? Uh, I said, tell the truth. Oh, I woke up at 7 o'clock. The world is created at 7 o'clock. Where from the world begins? The world begins from our body. Where the world ends? The world ends in our body. Therefore, this, this mantra, don't go into saying, where is the tree where the leaves are down? No, 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 no. Urdhva Moolam, we are eating from above. Adashakam, we are growing downwards and sidewards. Karmanu Bandhini Manusha Loke. And constantly doing this, doing that, and we are getting tied down in this world. Therefore, Bhagavan says, Yastam Veda Savedavit. He who knows the world is none other than our body identification. In deep sleep, where are we? When are we? What are we? How are we? But we are there. And the moment body identification happens, whole world is born. No, but Swamiji, we may be sleeping, the world may not be for us, but for others, don't worry about others. Adhyatma pertaining to yourself. See, don't get lost in social service. Social service is not spiritual life. Be very clear about it. Therefore, Urdhva Mula Madashakam Mashvattam Prahuravyam Chandam Siyasya Parnani Therefore, our life should be guided, Chandamsi, according to the Shastra Siddhanta. Tasma Shastram Pramanam Te Karya Karya Vyavasthitao. Bhagavan says very clearly, what should be done, what should not be done, is to be established not by our whims and fancy, but according to the scriptural injunctions. Otherwise, our life is guided by personal likes and dislikes. That is not spiritual life. Spiritual life is what is right and wrong. And who will decide what is right and wrong? The scriptures, not ourselves. Therefore, he who yastam veda sabedavit, he who knows this, he alone has known the truth. Therefore, the first step on the spiritual practice is Start playing. Don't become serious. What it is like being other than the body? You cannot think. For thinking, reference is required. When you accept yourself to be other than the body, no reference. He who knows this, he has known everything. There are no efforts. You have not done anything. Only right understanding alone can help us getting wrong, uh, out of the wrong notions. This is what Bhagavad Gita tells us. We will continue in our next class tomorrow. Om Purnamasya
ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ